Welcome back to Gotham Sound's <laughs> coverage of NAB 2024 ASNYC. I'm here with Jeff from WYSIWYG. Jeff, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, glad to be here. This isn't actually live. This is uh, the new microphone that we're talking about. This is. This is the WYSICOM MTH610. So this is the newest handheld from WYSICOM that follows a lot of the technology that we put into the MTP61. So this is multiband, so 470 through 960. So all the available spectrum for the United States in one mm -hmm. compact form factor. You'll notice on the bottom we have the same magnetic connector. Uh, so you can charge it. We'll have a charging dock coming uh, next year sometime that'll support the 61 and the 610 together. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what kind of batteries go in here? Standard AA is fantastic. Ask, oh, we have some fun, cool things. So uh, you can do standard AA's. We're going to have a rechargeable AA coming out. It's a little bit shorter mm -hmm. uh, in length, so we'll have a little spacer, but that should give you closer to, depending on your settings, about 10, 15, 18, 20 hours of autonomy. Um, wow. Yeah. Is it going to be uh, 1.5 volts or 3.7 or... I'll have to give you the, get the exact specs. Interesting, because I, I know that's that's something I've been messing around with rechargeable batteries a lot now, and uh, you know I know Sound Devices has their 3.7 volts, and then there's um, there are all these lithium cadmium batteries that um, have some extended you know milliwatt hours that are different than nickel metal hydride. So it's it's interesting to see all that coming out. So we'll stay tuned anyway. Back back yeah. to this. So. Standard double A's if you need. Um, as well, you'll see we have, as you would expect, you can do a micro SD. Mm -hmm. So for the US, you can transmit or record. Um, but same 32 bit float recorder or 32 bit. And you can jam time code via tentacle or eventually via the dock on the mag connector. Mm. Um, one of the other really cool things we did here, as you'll see, we of course pair it with the wonderful DPA capsules. We moved to the kind of more universal. Uh, three pin thread setups uh -huh. which are you know very commonly used across platforms like Shore and uh, some of the other bigger ones yep. um, but we also added the support of additional pins because mm. the mic itself only requires the three pins mm -hmm. but we have some accessories coming for push to talk so we have a very short one and a longer one so when you need to do interviews with the mic flags you can add some extension to the microphone to support the flag um, or adapt to some other capsules. But for now, you can get it with a DPA, you know, 2028 or 4018 VL or really anything that uh, your heart desires for capsules. Nice. That's fantastic. And so you said these are shipping soon. Soon. Yeah. yeah. We, we announced this uh, just before IBC a few weeks ago. And okay. um, yeah, we're excited to start shipping this very soon. Nice. So that's probably end of the year in the U.S., something like that, or what's, what's our... We're anticipating. Anticipating? Uh, okay, great. <laughs> so, you know, with, uh, you know, for, for stage people, right, that yeah. need a lot of handhelds, uh, putting that with a 16-channel MRK fully loaded, now you've got 16 channels of handheld, tiny transmitters, full-size transmitters, and you're really flushing out the line. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the next... It's the next thing we needed as part of our product line is to have the handheld, mm -hmm. especially one that supports the full 47960. Right. Because as I'm sure you know, everyone knows who's watching this, is that the amount of spectrum we have is just ever shrinking. So we need to be more efficient and more uh, agile. Right. And this has, um, you know, just to talk about the symphony range, right? Because yeah. that's what it's called. So it has a high density mode, right, where you can stack in a, a ton so, of channels. Yeah, so we call it linear. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you can do with that, same with the 61s, 60s, mm -hmm. and some of our previous gen products is it, we call it a linear amplifier. So you can put it either linear 10 or linear 20. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it will transmit your principal frequency. So let's say that's 500.0. But then it'll retransmit any intermod carriers that are coming in out of phase. So you can stack them in narrowband every 200 kilohertz at 20 milliwatts, even spacing with no intermod. Perfect. All right. So what have you been seeing in terms of trends at WYSICOM? Like t to me, fiber has been exploding this year in a way that it hasn't before. Yeah. Yeah. Fiber has become a real, a real exciting opportunity because I think a, a lot of us, myself included, doing, doing shows uh, I don't know, sometimes is... I, I hate dealing with coaxial cable, mm -hmm. and it's fine. You have to in some ways, but also, you know, coax cable's heavy, it's expensive, it's high loss. Yep. So we take an approach that uses the BFL, 
and you can do a little throwdown. And you know, we, let's talk about the numbers of it for a moment. In coaxial cable, you get, and this is going to be a little generalized for uh -huh. any of the RF nerds out there ready to to to, to at me on here. Um, let you get you know 100, 10, 120 dB of dynamic range because everything in RF, as you know, is all signal to noise. That's the yep. entire game we're playing. So in coaxial, you get 110, 120. In a lot of other fiber systems out there, you get about 60, and that's their their published usable dynamic range. The WYSICOM BFL goes to about 90. So you get a huge amount more dynamic range with a purpose-built laser for doing wireless microphones. Um, so it comes in a very compact form factor. You'll use one for your A antenna, one for your B, and then jump out via fiber and then have Bluetooth control. So you can put it into a case, mount it on a pole, mount it on your antenna, mount it wherever it is, and have your antennas come back so you can walk around, check it, make sure we're good, set some levels, set some filters, and keep on with your day. Because on a, on a film day, on a work day, whatever it is, you've got a thousand more things to think about than just this. Right, right, exactly. And, you know, I think that is the nice thing about, uh, about having a, a fiber run is that you could have a 500-foot a spool and yeah. it's going to be, you know, no loss. And you can just have the spool on your cart you know, going up to your antennas on your cart and then run it out whenever you want and not have to change, yeah. you know, barrels, adding in cables, calculating loss, adding amplification on your on your paddles. Yeah. E exactly. And on days where you're not really sure what you're walking into to have it's it's the same amount of loss at 500 feet versus 5000 feet. You just keep pulling your strand a little further. Yep. And you can then do the same thing and use a different set for moving your IFBs to your remote site. Mm hmm. And one thing I just want uh, to point out about WYSICOM, and this has been a learning uh, experience for me, is that the fiber connection on this is APC, yes. right? So that's angular, angled, Angle polished, polished, color, cookies, chocolate. I don't know what the C stands for. I don't actually know. Now that we say that, connector. Sorry. Thank you, Peter. Um, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is. it is very important because this... It's not just about the size of the connector. It's actually yeah. about the, the glass inside and whether it's angled or rounded. Yeah. And so you want to make sure that when you're, you're getting your fiber, uh, that you're getting the, the angled uh, polished connector on this side. And one of the things that, we've, uh, that we believe in is that you know, using a, a UPC long run is more better because that's kind of the standard for video over here in, in the States. So that if you something happens god forbid you know you can go to a video house rent a you know upc yeah. fiber run and let so it rip um but good you know tips yeah, and, and tricks so the thing that you know for anyone's hearing apc upc they're all it's a lot of words that fiber gets very lofty we were talking about this the other day mm -hmm. said there's a lot of different fiber connectors without even getting into the polish yep. uh, effectively APC being at an angle, if you imagine this is my cable, the connector, UPC being more flat. Yep. And the value in APC is it's less reflection coming back. Ah, um, well now we so know So you get why. a better dynamic range, it's less loss on the laser between junction points, and less reflecting back into your transmit laser. Got it. Laser. Generalized, sorry. Perfect. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, love, I love the simple science. That's perfect. So you guys are sharing a booth with uh, DPA and also sharing a United States office. Yeah, yeah, man. I, f I forgot. It's been it's been a moment. Yeah. So and uh, as of July of this year, twenty oh god, twenty twenty four, mm -hmm. um, we was it come in the U.S. merged operations with DPA for I think we called it a strategic alliance, but uh -huh. it's a merge of operations. You know, we we go together very very well. Uh, some of the ownership of the companies is a joint ownership, and so it it made a lot of sense to merge the operations of the companies. You know, Wizicom's footprint in the U.S. has always been very We've been very skeleton in a lot mm. of ways, um, yeah, out of just choice of how we like to operate. And it worked very, very well for us, but DPA has a massive support system, both between, you see, the number of our team here mm -hmm. and the off office in Longmont, Colorado. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, been, it's been really, really nice to have a huge amount of support and a huge amount of team around supporting WYSICOM, supporting our customers, supporting our users. Great. Um, Perfect. Well, good. I'm, I'm, and you're, but you're still East Coast. Yes, yes. I'm still uh, more or less Washington, D.C. Nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, perfect. Uh, um, well, we have a question from Ray Kendrick. Wants to know about the MCR54 Duel. The MCR54 Duel is an excellent question that uh, I believe the last I heard on it was we had to pause production on it um, because we were running into some shortage of components. 
the, the world of getting the components at the quality and quantity we want is still kind of recovering post the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So we had to make some decisions to pause production on that. I suspect his follow-up will be, well, when is it shipping again? Uh -huh. And that is an excellent question that I don't have the answer in front of me for. Um, but I know Nick will send an email the moment that we have that answer. Yes. Yeah. As always, whenever these uh, things come are re-released, yes. um, you know, we'll, we'll update our website one or social media. One of the other things that. I'll tell you about that we didn't mm -hmm. even uh, announce very loudly is mm -hmm. an, a new version of the MRK-16. Oh. Inside of the MRK, you know, we've had a lot of things that are very similar to what they were before. Mm -hmm. But what we've added in the back is the option to get a real-time spectrum analyzer. Oh. So when you plug your four M antennas in, your two A, two B, two zones, mm -hmm. you get a full management and full real-time analyzer of those zones, so you can see what's happening on a real-time level. And how do you how do you see that? Is that on an That'll app through WizzyCom Manager? I see. Okay, so you would connect a, a laptop or yeah. however. Nice, because the uh, that exists in what is it? The Mat two eighty eight as well doesn't it the mat 288 and 244 have like an rf bars that can tell uh -huh. you your uh oops, excuse me your kind of cumulative level coming in mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the same uh like analyzer to get the zooms in zooming in and detail of all the of what's happening you can take a scan with a 54 but this gives you a much more granular control to see what's going on in your spectrum nice. there's a lot of to, to repeat Peter's question, what's happening under the hood? Is there is there an additional receiver built in now? So it's it's less a full receiver, more just the RF parts of a receiver. Mm. There's another board, and I, I apologize, we didn't have the, the acrylic tops of this, but it's it's mounted right uh, below the expansion fiber card. Mm -hmm. That is another uh, effectively radio board. And is that is that an an additional option, or does that come with new MRK 16s? It's additional option. I see. And are old MRK 16s retrofittable? That's the what we're looking on and evaluating about which which versions have the potential to have that added. Got it. Okay. So uh, stay tuned for anybody that's got an MRK 16. Potentially. 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 I, I, I will not. I will not make. I've learned. Oh, believe me, I've uh -huh. learned. I will not make a promise on this on this live. Yes. I've made that mistake before. Uh, <laughs> And the Italians get very, uh, very uh, <laughs> not happy with exactly. that. Exactly. They don't like you <laughs> speaking for them in English. They, they don't like the promises without asking first. I see. I see. You know, we leaked our Bluetooth time code thing a couple of years ago. I remember that. I, I heard about that for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's see. Uh, Janos Ksaki, and I saw, sorry if I butchered your name, um, wants to know if there will be a new plug-on transmitter coming soon. Uh, with AES-42 for mics like uh, the new Sheps CMD-42. So the plug-on is a question that I know we're, we're kind of looking at, and I don't know the definitive answer. I know that we've had the PHA-60 for a mm -hmm. little bit, which is a rear-mountable, just slides on via the, the clip um, for the MTP-60 that'll support 12 or 48 volt phantom power. Mm -hmm. um, the, the plug-on is, is something that I know is in process. I just don't have a definitive timeline. Uh, same for we've, we're looking at the potential of adding an AES-42 like digital input option, mm -hmm. but we, we're still evaluating if that is going to match with how we want to do our transmitters and some of the direction that we're headed with future products. Got it. I mean, I imagine there has to be a new MTB-60 in development to take advantage of all the symphony. St I get to keep... Wait, this is... <laughs> I get no. to keep that, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's a, uh, they, they told me it's mostly a mechanical sample. I see. I see. Um, I see. It's something that I know it's, it's, it's very important in, in, uh, in the pipeline. I have, mm -hmm. I've read our, our pipeline and it's in there. I just do not know exactly when, uh, but we know we want to take all the same stuff we've done for symphony and put it into that form factor. Got it. Uh, so I, I will point out that, you know, we're talking about uh, APC and what the C stands for. It is definitely cookies or chocolate, um, for open. sure. So yeah, there here. we go. Chocolate, as we for say. For everyone watching at home, uh, you can share this chocolate with Nick. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you can thank Tom for sending it in. If you were at the booth, uh, we we have a limited chocolate left. but There we go. You know. Perfect. What we need for lunch. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. Thanks for being with us and walking us through uh, the new MTH 610 coming soon. Uh, thank you all for watching. As always, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and, and X and uh, email us at info at gothamsound.com. Um, we appreciate you watching and stay tuned for more. 
uh, from DPA momentarily. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. You, I, you know, every time we do these, I think I need to go get some uh, cooler jackets. I, you know, I, I wore a nice sweater today. I like today. the sweater. No, it's uh, nice. This yeah, is yeah, one. Thank you. My, my wife picked it out. <laughs> good job, Katie. Way to be. Way to be.